Well, good morning, my name is uh, Eric Viret. I am here uh, for your development, a uh, French uh, consulting market research company. And uh, I was invited uh, again this year by PIDA to talk about the uh, status of the LED industries and about a specific segment for UV LEDs. Uh, the, main, uh, the main point of my talk was to, to give uh, an update on the recent trends uh, on uh, front-end LED manufacturing, mostly uh, MOCVD investment and uh, status uh, regarding the supply and demand and uh, capacity versus uh, demand for MOCVD capacity and, and other tools. Uh, I think the main, uh, the main message is that uh, after uh, excess, uh, excess overcapacity uh, plaguing the industry for the last, uh, the last couple of years that uh, has created a very, very difficult situation for the industry, uh, now we are finally seeing uh, a new application uh, kicking in for uh, LEDs, which is uh, the general lighting applications. Uh, it is an application that uh, has been driving a lot of investment. Uh, we've been talking about it for years. For years, we've been saying it's coming soon. And this year, in 2013, I think it is finally, finally happening. And the result is that the, the situation is improving uh, for uh, many LED makers and especially for the, the already established and leading LED makers which are uh, already developed uh, channel access to market in those, um, in those new applications. Uh, situation remains challenging for the newcomers or second tiers which haven't uh, reached uh, a critical mass to uh, be strong players in this industry and also because uh, mostly in, uh, in China due to uh, very generous uh, subsidies from the central government and the province uh, there's been a lot of new companies coming in with very little uh, understanding of the technologies and uh, very uh, little access to market. And we believe that we are going to see a lot of consolidation in the next couple of years and a lot of uh, those uh, companies uh, might simply uh, disappear because they, they don't have access to the, uh, the key applications. Uh, but overall, globally, looking at the uh, entire industry, uh, the the trend is uh, much, uh, much better, much more optimistic than it was uh, last year. Uh, adoption of general lighting and uh, potentially also LEDs uh, developing new applications and new opportunities uh, for LED makers. Uh, so we today we showed a, a fairly optimistic forecast in terms of uh, number of uh, MOCVD to be sold in the next couple of years. Uh, fairly optimistic in terms of uh, intake of new, new equipments. Uh, we will see, uh, maybe uh, we'll come back next year and we will see if I was right or if I was completely wrong. Uh, it will be an interesting discussion I'm sure to have with uh, PIDA members and the, the audience here. Uh, the second part of my talk was uh, about uh, UV uh, LEDs. Uh, it is a, a very small niche uh, market in the, in the global uh, LED industry, but it is still a, a very profitable and very interesting niche with uh, uh, very strong opportunities for growth. Uh, this uh, market is currently driven by uh, curing applications. Uh, UV curing is used in a lot of industries for, uh, for example, wood coating, for ink printing, and in some uh, pharmaceutical industries. And today, curing applications are really driving the UV LED market. UV LED offers significant benefits in terms of um, lifetime, lower maintenance cost, uh, better energy efficiency. Uh, this, all those benefits are driven very strong, uh, strong penetration. But there are new, uh, new segments, new applications that are now being enabled by uh, recent progress in, uh, in UV LEDs. And uh, those are mostly uh, decontamination, water purification, and uh, basically eliminations of germs and mold from air, water, and, and surface. Uh, until now, those applications were not accessible to LEDs because of their uh, low power and, uh, and, and lower performance compared to traditional UV lamps. But uh, recent progress are now opening those markets to UV LEDs and uh, generating some significant uh, upside potential. And beyond that, there is also a, a very exciting uh, trend, which is that uh, the specificities of UV LEDs might open new um, new market and create new applications for, for UV. So we give a, a few examples like uh, the uh, nail polish gel curing, which is uh, already pretty, uh, pretty developed in Taiwan. We see a lot of this, uh, this equipment. Uh, another application that we, we believe could be very successful is the use of UV LED 
in a, in a fridge, in a refrigerator, in a freezer, in a, in a refrigerated display case because uh, adding UV LED source inside the fridge uh, significant, seem to significantly increase the, the shelf life of the product. So we show an example where uh, strawberries were going bad with mold and decaying after a few days in a normal fridge, but if you have a UV source in the fridge, uh, you can keep those strawberries for up to 10 days uh, without, uh, without decay. So those are some potential uh, significantly exciting applications for, uh, for UV LEDs, and I think this was the, the conclusion of my talk. Again, I would like to thank Peter for inviting me uh, this year in, in Taiwan.